was very friendly. He was an extra extrovert, yes, Krishna. So different deities. So scientists, maybe they are introverts by their, um, uh, say, uh, psychological type, but they have to overcome their un un introvert character and uh, form relations with each other. Otherwise, they will not be successful. You know, this Faraday saying uh, to to work, to finish, to publish. Mm, this is what I heard from my first scientific advisor. To finish, finish, to publish. Uh, so in order to work, you can work alone. But in order to publish, you have to ask uh, the publication. Uh, uh, you understand? Uh, you cannot publish your article alone. Only on your personal, uh, say, blog in the internet, but I, sometimes it's not enough, okay? So, uh, Shiva, Pascal. Pascal was uh, um, a person who, uh, you know, that's uh, um, measures of uh, pressure, pressure is measured in Pascals. And there is a Pascal language, uh, computer language, Pascal. Now it's outdated, but still uh, somehow it exists. Pascal was a brilliant mathematician and a genius of a kind, but um, he was too much, uh, his attention shifted to um, uh, themes of religion. So religion somehow hampered his scientific activity. So here is a conflict with Pascal, religion and science. He was a mystic uh, and being a mystic, he said that, well, Science is a distraction. Uh, you understand? He considered science to be a distraction. He considered mystical, his mystical life, his inner spiritual life to be more important than scientific discoveries. You see? So Pascal is uh, also, of course, a scientist, also, of course, a genius, but uh, his mysticism and his uh, kind of... Um, in uh, his accent or stress on spiritual life somehow hampered his scientific activities. So you should be, uh, you should know this example also. With Newton, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, this another example of a uh, scientist. He, he combined both uh, the uh, Cartesian method and uh, Pascal's genius and introvert character. I think his dates of life like that. Um, well, but I may be not correct with Newton, especially the date of death. But still, uh, Newton uh, was um, very also, uh, well, he insisted on method, but he used Mathematical method, mathematics, uh, because his uh, masterpiece was called Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Okay, uh, mathematical principles. So, this is uh, also a feature of scientific knowledge. Uh, the mathematical character of scientific knowledge, okay? Mathematics. Uh, everyday knowledge, well, of course, everyday knowledge has to do with figures if you so sort of count uh, the, uh, the prices, uh, add the prices in the supermarket. But it is, you cannot say that you have, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, co complex mathematical theories that you use in your everyday life. So mathematics plays a role, but it's a very humble role in your everyday life. But with the scientific uh, discoveries, with scientific methods, with scientific uh, investigations, uh, mathematics plays a great role. So, um, so this is uh, mathematical uh, character of knowledge is considered is considered to be the uh, feature 
that distinguishes scientific uh, knowledge from everyday knowledge, from common knowledge. And the last name is Galileo. Uh, Galileo. Here is uh, uh, opposition to Pascal in. Uh, Uh, this is my mother-in-law. She wants to switch off the light because she wants to economize on electricity. But if I will be in the dark room, you can be frightened as if I'm like a ghost, you understand? So uh, I prefer to give a lecture in broad daylight. Not Oh, not broad daylight, of course, but electric light. Um, so Galileo, 16... 42, oh no, no, uh, 1564, uh, uh, 1642. Uh, so uh, with Galileo, uh, Galileo is, can be opposed to Pascal. For Pascal, religion meant everything. He was a mystic, he was a spiritual man. Galileo suffered from theologians because they accused him of heresy, Copernican heresy, okay? So Galileo is an example of kind of a strife between science and religion. Well, we spoke about that during our first lecture. You remember the relations between science, uh, philosophy, and religion. So religion can be good for scientists if it gives him uh, idea that the world can be known because the world is a creation of a supreme intelligence. Uh, so that's the answer to Einstein's question, why the world is uh, uh, cognoscible or can be known. Um, uh, and, uh, but religion also, if it gets a man and he finds in, within himself this mystical uh, vocation, it can sort of uh, distract him from science. Uh, and he himself can look at the science as a distractor. With Galileo, it's another story. Galileo uh, saw that uh, heliocentric um, theory of Copernicus uh, gives no other opportunity as to interpret certain biblical texts in metaphorical way, not uh, literally. For example, there's a psalm, psalm, uh, I'm sorry, um, like that, I think, psalm, no. I just, I, well, I will write in this way, psalm 18, 18. And there, is, there it is written, as the sun gets out of its tabernacle uh, like a bridegroom uh, and is eager to follow its way. So uh, sun is compared to a bridegroom who comes out of his tabernacle, okay? And uh, so if we understand this psalm literally, then it means that the sun is moving. So what did Galileo do? He suggested to interpret this psalm metaphorically, not literally. And the theologians say, well, who are you? You are only an astronomer and we are theologians. Why do you dabble, you know that dabble, dabble in theology? Uh, so you are the uh, dilettante you are not a professional theologian. So this was the, uh, that was the, you know, devil, yes? Devil, who knows this word, devil? No, I will consult uh, uh, English. Uh, like trying? Devil. It's uh, trying. Uh, like trying. a slight and not very serious interest in a subject or try a particular activity for a short period. 
I will copy it and put it in chat. Uh, so you see, uh, um, this is a, a definition which is given by Cambridge Dictionary, De to dabble, dabble. Uh, dabble. Dabble. Okay, dabble. So uh, to uh, have a like a superficial view of something. So what, what uh, Galileo was accused of dabbling in, in theology, that he was not a serious theologian. He didn't study professionally theology. And that's why when he came across these difficulties in interpreting the sacred texts, the Bible, he was accused of uh, being a superficial uh, interpreter, superficial commentator. And that's why he was silenced. Uh, the Pope, Urban the, the Eighth, silenced him. This was the Roman Pope, Urban the Eighth. He silenced uh, Galileo. So uh, you see, sometimes uh, a scientist can uh, enter in, diff in, in, in difficult relations with uh, the church. So what did scientists do? They organized themselves in academies, in uh, uh, scientific communities, uh, and uh, this organization sort of uh, defends them from accusations from different fields, from political parties, from uh, uh, the churches or other religious institutions. So scientists have always are always uh, fighting for their independence. They need this, uh, how to say, space of liberty for their work, for their... Sometimes they don't get it, but uh, there were, for example, periods, especially in the history of my country, USSR, you know, USSR, uh, former Russia was Soviet Russia, okay, Soviet Union. Yes, uh, when there was Marxist ideology and it sometimes hampered scientific activities, especially genetics was under suspicion uh, in, in the Soviet Union. No why, but still it was also quantum mechanics and even special theory of relativity quantum mechanics. This I can prove it. I have uh, the proofs, uh, but I don't want just to uh, give you not important information. Uh, quantum mechanics and theory of relativity. They were all uh, considered idealistic, uh, not conform in conformity with Marxism of relativity. Well, uh, what did uh, maybe physicists would have suffered uh, relativity, uh, would suffered more even, but what helped them is that uh, Stalin was uh, very much in, in developing the nuclear weapons and he needed physicists to accomplish the task. So uh, some prominent people who were uh, at the head of this uh, nuclear project, like academician Korchatov, and Stalin believed him and uh, sort of had friendly relations with him. So academician Korchatov said, well, Mr. Stalin, um, don't, uh, don't uh, sort of, um, uh, so liberate us from Marxist ideology and give us uh, uh, enough uh, uh, time and uh, opportunity to just to work on the nuclear project and uh, atomic energy uh, used in uh, also in um, peaceful way in peaceful purposes. So don't uh, uh, don't allow the philosophers, Marxist philosophers, accuse us of different heresies. Just remember the example of Galileo. Now, um, maybe 
the church feels a little bit ashamed of what happened and uh, Pope John Paul II officially rehabilitated Galileo. Uh, John Paul II, on, the, on behalf of the Catholic Church, he uh, rehabilitated Galileo from the suspicion of heresy. Okay, So this is, well, what I want to stress. Uh, 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 we had this also <clears throat> part of this uh, question is a scientific institution. So, so science as a social institute. So we have to speak about also so-called scientific community. This term was coined by uh, Thomas Kuhn as philosopher of science. scientific community. This term was coined by Thomas Kuhn. So Thomas Kuhn, American philosopher of science. Okay, so what is that? What is that scientific community? It will be our last question. Let's think about that. You are all from different countries, from different civilizations, from different religion, religious backgrounds. Maybe some of you are agnostics, some of you are believers. We don't, I don't know. Uh, it's your private opinion, uh, your private affair, sort of. But what unites you all is not your differences, linguistic or uh, cultural, but this uh, adherence to scientific unity, which is international, you see, and it possesses a certain qualities, uh, how to say, so scientific ethics, uh, like communalism. What is communalism? Uh, communalism means that uh, nobody is excluded, uh, that Science can be done by women, by uh, men of every nationality, every race. Uh, only what is needed is uh, uh, your talents, your abilities, okay? So this, and also communalism is a free exchange of scientific information. So you can um, uh, publish your works, your achievements, your results and they can be reached by any anyone from any place in the world and i think the internet can help greatly this feature of communalism uh well also um well there's the abbreviation called uh kudos um sorry This is Thomas Merton, a famous, no, no, Thomas, uh, Robert Merton, Cudus. What does it mean, this abbreviation? Uh, Mertonian norms, they are called. Uh, oh, here, then I will copy them. Mertonian norms. Here they four Mertonian norms. I'm sorry. No. You see the four Mertonian norms of in the Brazil the Cudans can be summarized as communism or communalism. The scientists have common ownership of scientific goods, intellectual property to promote collective collaboration. Secrecy is the opposite of this norm, okay? Universalism, 
let's speak about universalism. So, um, universalism. Uh, this, what is, do we have here in our chat, in our Zoom conference? Universalism. You are from different countries, from different, uh, different sexes, different races, different nationalities, different religions. But you, uh, this is, you see, scientific validity is independent of social political status or personal attributes of its participants. Okay, so this is what we say universalism. Uh, this is a a typical feature of scientific community, so of science as a scientific, uh, as a so, uh, social institution. Then uh, comes D, disinterestedness. This is the most difficult thing. Interestedness, disinterestedness. This is difficult. What? Because every person is an egoist by his nature. So how to reach this disinterestedness? How to become an alt altru altruist? You, you understand? Altruist. How to say, how to pronounce it? Uh, who can pronounce it correctly? Altruism. Mm -hmm. You can write it, I think. Uh, yes. Uh, you can. You, uh, Altruism, yes. Write it in chat uh, because I know how it is written. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. Altruism, maybe. I will I will find it. Okay. In yeah, it's I altruism. Will find it. Altruism. Well, let's find it. Altruism. 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 Okay, you hear it. It's uh, from Cambridge Dictionary. Altruism. So, altruism is a uh, rare. Uh, egoism is common. Okay. So, uh, what is the, uh, Robert Merton? What he wants to stress is that scientists should possess or cultivate a certain altruism, okay? In disinterestedness. So he, can, he, he shouldn't, he should fight with his uh, natural egoism. Act for the benefit of a common scientific enterprise, you see? Rather than for the person gain of individuals within their, within them, okay? So, uh, Act for the benefit of a common scientific enterprise. Okay, that's that's it. That's important. And then organize skepticism. The the, the last one. Ske uh, why uh, why should we say that a scientist should be a skeptic? Skeptic or oh, um, skepticism. Or uh, as Karl Popper of um, called it, uh, skepticism. Uh, uh, Karl Popper called it critical realism. Realism. Well, which which means that you are should be realist, but you should be critical in what in what way that you shouldn't take for reality everything that is told to you. You should check twice, okay? Think twice. You should not be uh, like an um, easy believer, you, you understand? Uh, you should uh, doubt you, you, yourself, uh, other people's opinions also, and uh, try to find faults everywhere. Uh, well, you see, this is bad. It's negative attitude. 
You understand? We, we should be positive. We should believe other people. But uh, somehow, even the educator, as me, I should also ha have this organized skepticism towards you. Never believe that your students are too smart, okay? Understand that perhaps they lack some information. So never, never think about other people as too smart. Uh, understand uh, that they perhaps are uh, sometimes ignorant of very obvious, for you, obvious things. No, don't be angry with them for that. Don't despise them, but be, how to say, uh, sober. You understand? Sober. Oh, you understand? Sober. So not, not be too, don't, uh, as a, a, a scientist shouldn't be over enthusiastic. He should be a little bit sober to himself and to other scientists. That will create the atmosphere when uh, mm, uh, scientists will um, find or sort of uh, uh, like separate the true uh, assertions from false assertions. Okay, this is this is what sift. You understand what is sift? Sift the grain. Eh? Am I writing correctly? Sift. Sift. I will just sift. To put flour, sugar, etc., through a sieve. Or break up large pieces. Well, uh, this means uh, uh, sieve. Um, um, uh, I'm sorry. Where? Ah, here. Um, yes, this is to sift, not swift, but sift. Sift is to put flour, sugar, etc., through a sieve, wire net shaped like a bowl, to break up large pieces. So you should sift the knowledge in order to uh, sift error from truth. Okay. This is skepticism because many things, uh, well, for, for example, sometimes when I listen to my lectures, I can sift good things from mistakes. Yes, yeah, separate uh, mistakes from uh, good, um, true assertions. So sometimes, well, if I make a lecture like this one, which, uh, which is more than a, an hour, then uh, I'm afraid I can make a lot of mistakes, okay? So I must always correct myself or question myself or uh, like uh, also, um, well, observe my language and uh, sometimes even look into the dictionary, just not to mix up things, just not to give place to some uh, mistakes, okay? Because I'm teaching other people, it's very important that I will not teach false things, okay? But you are also invited to correct me if you find some uh, uh, faults or some ty typos, uh, as, I don't know, typos, yes, mistakes. How are they? Typo errors. Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, this is a typo. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, and if I make some mistakes, I already I apologize in advance for that. Well, maybe you are tired, and uh, we should stop it. Yes. Or you have questions, maybe. Then I can answer questions. Mm. Or 
who are listening to me? How many people are listening? 17 people. So please, if somebody have questions or maybe organizational questions uh, um, about the, Yes. How can you uh, define organized uh, skepticism? Skepticism. Uh, well, uh, uh, you see here is already, we have already uh, um, mm, definition. Um, so, uh, ah, so, mm, pause. Bertonian principles. I just I will uh, show you the four Bertonian norms, and here is organized skepticism. Scientific claims should be exposed to critical scrutiny before being accepted, both in methodology and institutional codes of uh, of what of conduct. Okay. So uh, critical scrutiny, which means uh, criticism, you see? So you should be open to criticism. Uh, you, you must or you should criticize yourself. And if uh, your mate, if your friend criticizes you, you shouldn't be offended. Because usually when you take, um, say, classes in psychology, they will say, if somebody criticizes me, then he is aggressive, shows aggression against me. So I should dismiss such a person if he criticizes. That means he's negative, he's, uh, he's aggressive. So he's a, uh, an enemy. Uh, in science, it, if you have such a position, if somebody criticizes your views and you say, oh, this is an enemy, he's an aggressor, I should just cross him out of my notebook, okay, and ban him, okay, from my social, um, uh, how to say, social, social sites. Okay. Yes, uh, because he's an impudent person, okay. So there should be nothing personal here, because we're doing science. Of course, if a man sort of calls you bad words or just uh, humiliates you, it's another thing. But uh, um, uh, if, if just it's a normal intelligent talk and a person politely shows you his disagreement with your, uh, say, conclusions and shows you perhaps where can be a mistake here um, found uh, in your, say, mathematical uh, syllogisms like that. So you should just give an ear to it okay don't be uh too um, don't be offended okay uh, so try to uh um, practice humility you know it's humility i don't know humility is not now humanity uh, uh try to practice humanity humility. Okay. humanity and humility also uh humility is uh maybe so more in, old, old fashioned. Humility is just uh, to be uh, humble. To insult yes, someone uh, or to humiliate uh, someone. Well, humiliate, of course, is bad. To humiliate a person, it's bad behavior. But humility as a virtue is good. That you don't uh, sort of think too much of yourself. Well, this is, uh, of course, a uh, uh, maybe a little bit old-fashioned um, notion, but still it, it, it exists. Uh, well, I can show you how it is um, defined, humility. Uh, humility. So humility is um, the quality of not being proud because you are aware of your bad qualities. Mm, interesting, uh, uh, interesting definition. Um, it's from Cambridge Dictionary. It's not mine. The quality of not being proud because you are aware of your bad qualities. Okay. So, well, uh, 
of course, this uh, moral, but ethical, but if we just uh, transfer it to science, bad qualities means that you have uh, not enough, perhaps, uh, um, how do I say, not enough intelligence, maybe because the computer has too much, not much enough memory uh, to do everything. So this is my bad quality is presumption, for example, you know, presumption. Presumption is that you are presumption. Presumption, it means that you too much believe in yourself, in your own abilities. So presumption uh, and humility is the opposite humble, humbleness, yes. And uh, humility is the uh, opposite of presumption. So you don't think too much of yourself. You understand that you are limited somehow. Well, it is not, you see, if, of course, if I say to you openly that, oh, this, you are a limited person, then you can be offended, okay? Uh, better um, address it to yourself. I mean, me, I must address it to myself. I am a limited teacher. I don't have to think too much of myself. Just learn and try to be modest and uh, uh, honest and humble and so on. So this is uh, what we call skepticism uh, in uh, relation to oneself. But also skepticism can be oriented towards uh, hearsay, you understand, to fake news, okay? Because science is always opposite of pseudoscience, okay? So in relation to pseudoscience, uh, there should be more than enough skepticism, okay? Otherwise you will get lost. So many people say we are, uh, we have extra, uh, uh, somehow superhuman abilities, um, or how to say, uh, mm, well, uh, we can uh, just, part of psychology, we can read other people's uh, thoughts, or we can uh, just move objects by our just will. So, if we allow all these things to enter science, then it will be the end of it, you see? So you should be very skeptical. As a, a, a skepticism was shown by many scientists uh, when there was a, a more, um, how to say, fashion of so-called um, uh, spiritism. You know, spiritism. Mm. Uh, there was a fashionable movement in 19th century Europe, spiritism. Uh, and mediums, they were people who uh, evoked spirits. Mm, well, so, yes, I think these uh, are just examples where skepticism is perhaps uh, important, okay? It doesn't mean that skepticism should just lead you to agnosticism or atheism. This is quite another thing. Uh, we'll discuss it, that uh, religion can have its place in science. Okay. And, uh, it's not contrary to science, but um, uh, I would say superstition should be excluded. Okay. Okay, so but uh, huh? yeah, I, I do yes. want to know that uh, how does uh, it is related to the science? Like, uh, does science believe in the spiritism or in a ghost or some mediums who evoke ghosts well, or like? Yes, like, I know? see. Yes. Uh, well, spiritism, of course, is a like some form of religion because spiritism is a quasi-religious movement, you know, quasi-religious, uh, because it's not organized like the church or like Hinduism, for example, whereas mm -hmm. uh, tradition, it's a quasi-religious movement. Uh, movement. Uh, well, uh, when we say about, for example, Hinduism, then we can say that Hinduism is a culture. Uh, it uh, uh, helped Indians to become a great nation, okay? Uh, but Hinduism was a cradle of your civilization, okay? So you shouldn't despise Hinduism as something uh, negative. You should understand that it was perhaps a certain uh, like a step which leads you to maybe uh, well, 
higher uh, phases of development, but this phase shouldn't be neglected or shouldn't be despised, okay? It was a stage. The, maybe you now you should you are not a believer in Krishna and don't believe that Krishna had sixteen thousand wives and yeah. built every every wife a castle. So perhaps now we are outgrown out of it. But we should understand that psychologically and politically this religion formed uh, the character of Indian nation and uh, helped develop very good qualities of Indian people, like industry. You understand industry? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is industry. The, some cool thing uh, the India does have. Yes, industry, yes. Now, honesty, uh, you understand. Then politeness. Uh, uh, oh, they call it gentlemanly behavior politeness yes uh, also uh, openness uh, toleration tolerance maybe yes uh, well let's I just name a few tolerance so all of them are there in uh, your culture which is of course very closely intertwined with religion so you cannot separate religion from culture because in uh, in uh, um, in English language, cult and culture are of the same root. You understand? Cult uh, pertains to religion, and culture pertains to culture. Okay, so okay. you see, uh, and science was part of culture and is part of culture. Because if culture will be against science, the scientists couldn't live in a culture which is not friendly to them. So culture should so give some, uh, how to say, some place for science. If culture will be um, an, uh, just uh, in enmity to science, okay, not friendly to science, then the science will, will not be possible to exist. You see that scientists, uh, Scientists uh, can exist on can exist only in a friendly atmosphere. When everybody hates you because you are smarter than others, then you can't leave. Okay, they will kill you, cut your throat. Okay, you understand. Especially in such uh, traditional societies as uh, Indian society, where woman was looked a little bit uh, with suspicion. You understand. Now you, you understand it. So you, uh, and religion can help it, especially higher forms of religion like Hinduism or Christianity. Uh, it can uh, educate a man in good, uh, well, of course, uh, there can be fanatis, fanaticism and uh, superstition and everything, but still uh, the positive outcome is uh, uh, much more than the negative one, okay? outweighs the negative. So, well, I think it's enough today. I think you are tired, all of you. Uh, I would appreciate very much if you uh, just uh, record it and uh, then share others with the record, okay? Yeah. The lecture. Yes, if anybody wants to, another question, this, we have still five minutes for that. If yes. Not, ah, yes, please. Me. Um, professor, I would like to ask you if you can say something about the use of the word um, religion because, or, or the religious person, because, for example, when you were talking about um, Pascal or Descartes, uh, I think that the meaning of, of religion or religious person is, is uh, sometimes have a there is a deeper meaning. For example, if we the last last week we were talking about the the last century scientists like Heisenberg, Planck, or Einstein, and what and for them what does religion uh, religious person means. So, for example, I remember I read something um, some writing of Einstein, and he characterizes a religious person as someone who has the 
have faith in some kind of intuition of this genius you were talking about. I and, see. But this is uh, quite different from the for the blind believer. For oh, okay, to... of course, of course. Mm -hmm. that's, that's well. The, this I can't summarize it in five minutes, but I will yes. just say that this is interesting uh, topic. And when we come to our next class, uh, which will be devoted to scientific revolution of the 17th century, then we'll speak about those revolutionaries. First of all, Copernicus, who was a believer, but at the same time, an innovator. Okay? Yes. So you can yes. say that with Copernicus, we have an example of a blind faith, but Copernicus surely believed that the world is organized by some supreme intelligence. Well, I will show you by concrete example. Yes, yes, I just want to, to point out that because we are going to listen and use this word a lot and, and maybe yes, of we course. need to, to have a... Of course, a, we have to precise its meaning. Yes, yes. certainly, certainly, most certainly. So now I think that our time, we have run out of our time and uh, so I wish everybody a good Sunday evening or Saturday evening. Well, I'm sorry, Saturday evening and uh, good Sunday holidays. And want, I would like to meet you next Saturday at the same time, 19 hours uh, Moscow time. Because uh, unfortunately, I cannot afford any other time for you. Okay. So please uh, uh, receive my uh, uh, thanks for listening to me and I wish everybody goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Especially thank Anshita.